Hi, my name's Glenn Kirby. I'm the UK and Ireland Technical Manager for Syngenta. And we're here today to talk about the art of application. We're going to look at how we can get the right product at the right time in the right place. We're going to have a little think about the area of the plant you're trying to impact. What are you trying to do when you're applying your product? Where are you trying to hit? Are you trying to hit the leaf, the crown, or are you trying to get that product into the soil? It's really important when you start your spraying setup that you've got a very clear picture in your mind exactly what you're trying to achieve with that product. There is no perfect here, there's a lot of compromises and challenges, but if you can set out with a clear picture in your mind of what you're trying to achieve, you've got a much better chance of hitting it. So if we have a look at this one, which is a greens core, you can see we've got good moisture through here, we've got a very, very tight leaf surface, probably cut around three millimetres. Doesn't need a particularly high water volume to coat that leaf. However, once you start moving up into kind of 400s, you will move it off the leaf and into the crown, and actually 600 litres a hectare will move it down into the soil. Um, it will certainly be washing it off of the leaf. A lower water volume of around 250 will re give you really good leaf coverage here, assuming you've got the right pressure. And that's the kind of thing you want to be thinking there is kind of medallion, a contact fungicide, low water volumes on the leaf. Uh, 400 litres a hectare is your kind of primo or something that's very systemic. So it's going to go down into the crown, get taken up by the leaf. And then something that is soil activating like heritage or you would use Colibra as a wetting agent. You want to be getting that up around 600. Now, if we look at something like um, a fairway core, we've got some slightly different challenges here. We've got a soil profile that is very dry, very crumbly. Um, we've got high levels of fibre and thatch in there, and we've got a bit more leaf. So probably 400 litres a hectare is only just going to kind of get you into the crown here. You want to be slightly higher water volumes, and if you think you're going to move um, the products through this fibre down into the soil by just putting it on at 600 litres a hectare, you probably want to manage your own expectations a little bit. You're going to need to get these soil profiles wet first and you're going to need to wash that through. So applying in a situation like this, applying in wet days where you've got good rainfall following it up, if you're trying to hit the soil would be really important. So we're going to have a look at another one here. This one is a tease core. Now, it's very similar in construction method to the fairways. Um, you can tell that it is fairly typical of golf clubs and it's got it's all sorts of things in the soil here. We've got bricks and flints and bits and pieces. But you've got a reasonably high fibre level in here, but the difference between this and the fairway one is this is really well hydrated. It's been under irrigation for a number of, through most of the summer, it's probably had a good aeration programme on it and a wetting agent programme. So here you've got a much better chance of moving material off the leaf and into this soil profile because the hard work has been done through the summer. But again, with a kind of leaf coverage like this, 250 is probably enough to do a foliar contact application. 400 would move it down to the crown for something that's more systemic and you want to be up on a white nozzle at two and a half bar giving you somewhere around 600 litres a hectare to get down off the crown uh, and lower into the profile so you can wash that in with irrigation afterwards. Hopefully now you've got a pretty clear idea of where you're trying to target when you're applying different products and we're going to have a look now at some different techniques and different nozzles and different pressures and give you some ideas as to how you can target your sprays more effectively. So what we have here is the Syngenta Art of Application nozzle bath. With this bit of kit, we can adjust the pressure, we can switch the nozzles around and we can have a really good look at what's going on with these nozzles and different pressures to understand fully how that's going to impact the application on the turf. When we're thinking about this, we want to be thinking about what target do we want to be hitting? Do we want to be hitting the, uh, the leaf, the crown, or getting it down into the soil? So we've got the three nozzles set up on here now. We've got the purple, the reds, and the white that we've looked at and discussed. It's really good to look at these all next to each other because you can start to see the value of them. You can start to see how your droplet range is much, much smaller. You've got much smaller droplets down here. Uh, you're going at lower water volume, smaller droplets, you've got a much better chance of hitting the leaf. You're letting the nozzle do the work, you're keeping your pressure right, and we're getting all of the product onto the leaf. Moving to this range, you can see there's a little bit more um, kind of intensity with the way it's landing. Keep it at the right pressure again in that optimum range, and then let the nozzle do all of that work, 
and that will run some of it down off the leaf into the crown. It will keep some of it on the leaf. That's great for your systemic products that kind of go in that middle range. And then you can see at this end with the white nozzle, just how intense and how much energy there is bouncing into this water. All at exactly the same pressure, but so much more energy at this end. All of those droplets are bouncing off the leaf. They're bouncing down into the soil. They're not getting an opportunity to dry on the leaf anywhere near as much as these ones are. And then they're there ready for you to water in to whatever target zone you choose. But the, the, the really important thing here is to think about how can you use these nozzles at the right pressure to get the product that you want to use to exactly where you want it on that plant. So we're going to put the O25s on and we're going to run these at around two and a half bar, which is your optimum pressure for these nozzles. At two and a half bar, they give you a nice coverage, low water volume, so it's giving you an optimal chance of hitting the leaf as your target. So for those kind of contact fungicides, things that you want to sit on the leaf, your purple nozzle, nice and slow, good coverage at around two and a half bar is absolutely perfect for you. Here we've got the demonstration of the purple nozzles at two and a half bar. So the next one we're going to look at is the O4, which is the red nozzle. Uh, it's labelled up as a folia, a lot of it depends on your forward speed, but again your optimum pressure is around two and a half bar. Try and keep it right in the middle of its pressure range. That'll give you a nice volume of water, really good coverage cover a lot of the leaf, get some of it down into the crown. So if you're looking to target the kind of crown area, kind of primo application that's taken up by the plant, a systemic activity, then your red nozzle is the right nozzle to be using. Demonstration now of the red 04 nozzles at two bar. Okay, so we've got the white nozzle set up on here now. We've only got one because in order to get the pressure through these nozzles on this small little spray booth, we can't get a higher pressure or the right pressure through three of them. So there's one set up on there. So if we turn that on now. That's currently set up at two bar and you can see we've got a really nice pattern, but inside the tray, you can see just how much energy there is forcing that stuff down through the crown. So it's bouncing off the leaf going into the lower profiles of the plant so it's there ready to be taken and washed into the soil. That's at two bar. We can up that pressure up to three bar. It's still in that optimum range so everything's looking good. But once we get up to that kind of four bar range you can see we start getting a little bit of drift. So that's right at the top end of where we want to be using these soil nozzles. Okay, so we've got two nozzles set up on here now. We've got the 04 Red XC nozzle and we've got an 04 flat fan, which is quite a traditional nozzle, quite old technology, but has been used quite in the industry for a number of years. The flat fan gives you great coverage, but it gives you really, really fine droplets. Now, a lot of those droplets can be lost in drift, uh, whereas the XC, the amount of drifty droplets is significantly reduced. And we're going to have a little look at that now. So what we have here is water sensitive paper and we've got a significant amount of drift on this one and very little drift on this one. Now that was only set up at three and a half bar. If you start upping that up to four bar, you get an awful lot of drift with these and a lot of product lost compared to much better coverage and less drift with the XC nozzles. Right, so we've got two nozzles on here. We've got the traditional flat fan and we've got the XC04. We're up at around four bar in the pressure. You can see just how much drift there is being kicked off here. So we're going to do one thing. We're going to turn this off. The pressure is going to go up to around six bar because we've now got one nozzle and you watch all this drift reduce. You can see the drift is significantly reduced now, even though the pressure has gone from four bar up to six bar. Still a bit of drift, but it's good, much better. 
So what we've got set up on the booth now, we've got a air induction, a traditional air induction nozzle, and we've got one of the XC08 soil nozzles. I'm often asked why you should use one over the other. They're both really, really good at drift reduction. Um, if we run them now, we can have a good look at why. So both nozzles are designed to have less drift and they both do a really good job of that. But what you'll see here is a much larger number of droplets coming through that nozzle with the same amount of drift control as this one, but this is just going to give you much, much better coverage with equal drift control as a traditional air induction.